Hello and welcome to CIS 4510, IT Project Management. In this session, we will continue with the planning phase and identify project goals, then identify the methods and the metrics needed to measure each goal. Actually, identifying goals is the first step of the planning phase. And as uh, I stated, in the first slide, uh, goals should be expressed in the form of an attribute or attributes that can be measured using a specific metric. A metric is a standard uh, of measurement uh, by which efficiency, performance, progress, or quality of a plan, uh, process, or a product can be assessed. While measurements is the act of using metrics uh, through multiple steps and according to standards, um, and to understand that more, uh, we uh, are going to go over, uh, you know, a simple example. Uh, for example, the project schedule is considered an attribute that needs to be measured using the days or weeks metric. The, that measure will assist in making sure that project goals are executed within the assigned time period or within the project schedule. Uh, project goals can be derived uh, from project characteristics which have been identified through capturing or captioning uh, customer uh, requirements. Uh, functional and non-functional requirements will be translated into preliminary goals such as uh, a secured system, a fully functional system, a high quality system, a user-friendly system, a cost-efficient system and of course I need all that to be delivered in time. Some goals or characteristics are uh, hard to measure. As a result, associated attributes uh, will be defined with specific metrics to make uh, sure that the attribute is measurable, trackable, validatable, and verifiable. When we say measurable attribute, that means an attribute which has a well-defined metric and a methodology to measure uh, that it has been implemented or achieved correctly. When we say trackable, that means the ability to keep track of the measurements taken for a specific attribute. When we say validatable, means to compare the stated goal with the actual measured goal to make uh, sure that it matches what customers specified and when we say verifiable that means ensuring that the measurements of an attribute or a goal is properly uh, recorded through a repetition tracing or some other means broad goals are not sufficient and might be hard to measure it's better to break uh, break them down into clear attributes and sub attributes that can be measured Metrics and measures can be uh, deliverable uh, related to project and process related. So either it will be uh, deliverable related or could be project and process related. So uh, we look, we are going to look at both uh, sides. Uh, if we look at the uh, deliverable related uh, example, uh, we can find that quality, usability, uh, functional completeness, maintainability, modifiability, reliability, and installability, which is for uh, software development only, um, all these are considered as uh, deliverable related metrics. And we'll talk about uh, project and process related metrics later on. So if these attributes are hard to measure, we can break them down to sub-attributes and attach the proper metric to each one of them. To understand project attributes and the proper selection of the metric, uh, let's take quality as an example. Quality in IT projects might mean the amount of errors or how well deliverable meet customer requirements. 
for each alternative definition of the quality a different metric must be defined for example the amount of errors should be measured by the number of errors found in a deliverable or the percentage of meeting requirements in the function delivered errors in the deliverables can lead to defects uh, which might affect uh, organization credibility fixing a defect during the execution will cost more than fixing an error uh, before uh, making that error before committing that error so it's better to fix the error so it will not lead to a defect now re remember that with more errors the quality of the deliverables will decrease in some cases the goals might incremental uh, might be incremental and one goal might affect another which means if a goal has a defect it might affect another goal defect in one goal might stop project completion when goals are quantified through breaking them to sub goals they can be measured using specific metrics and defects could be eliminated or minimized it's very important to deliver zero high severity defects although we might have some low defects or low severity defects that can be fixed during maintenance especially if we are talking about the software development and software release at that point you will see that you know software being released and then followed by an update that will include the fix for these small or low uh, severity uh, defects as we stated the number of unresolved defects categorized by severity level can be used as a metric to measure the quality of a goal the measurement process might include the collection analysis and the test for results defects can be identified and reported based on severity Other metrics and measurements could be project and uh, process related such as schedule, uh, cost, productivity, efficiency, and employee morale. In previous session, we talked about analyzing tasks and the different activities within uh, the project in addition the duration of each activity or task can be estimated and we will explain uh, that in detail uh, will explain that process in details in the next few slides knowing this information will assist in developing the project schedule now the schedule will uh, provide deadlines due dates and milestones to ensure the integrity of the uh, schedule these dates have to be met and um, if decreasing the time to perform a task will decrease the quality of the that task an explanation has to be uh, presented to the upper management asking for either additional resources additional money or an extension uh, time um, actually you know experienced project managers will add about 10 to 15 percent of time buffer to avoid schedule slippage and uh, penalties and to ensure project uh, quality so again if we look at the uh, different attributes we, we need also to look at the uh, uh, interoperability uh, between them because they interact with each other and they affect each other and we need to make sure that uh, none of the attributes will affect the other attribute to ensure that the development of the proper schedule we need to uh, define project activities as we did in uh, the previous session uh, we need to estimate the resources needed to accomplish uh, each activity uh, with the given time with the provided budget and with quality we need to estimate the duration of each task based on a different methodology and technique 
and we need to define the sequence of these activities as we did in the previous session building the network diagram and uh, creating the Gantt chart uh, given all the information above uh, the schedule will be uh, developed and the project manager will use techniques and tools to monitor and control the schedule as uh, the project being executed to estimate resources needed we have to clarify the resources that resources does not mean humans only actually resources include people facilities equipment money and materials to estimate the resources we need uh, either one or more of the following tools uh, expert judgment historical data bottom-up estimating and project management software to um, uh, estimate task, uh, task duration correctly we need to understand the difference uh, between work effort and task uh, duration the work effort is the actual time required to complete an activity activity duration is the total time needed to complete an activity to explain more uh, let's look at the following example we have a client document to be reviewed by an attorney the attorney time the actual time that the attorney spent on reviewing the document was 30 minutes but the paper took 10 days to come back to your, uh, uh, from the attorney's office so the total duration of this task is 10 days while the work effort is 10 uh, is uh, 30 minutes and this is uh, a diagram or a figure that shows uh, the difference between the duration and the work effort as you can see in the slide or in the uh, figure the labor time is 70 percent of the duration uh, time since you have almost like 33 percent of unplanned interruptions of email coffee breaks bathroom break phone calls socialization and many other things so we have to consider that when uh, you know estimating the duration and looking at the work effort versus the duration when estimating task duration you can choose to estimate hours of a billable label uh, labor to complete the task or estimate the clock time required to complete the task and uh, you know actually in many many cases we need both uh, the first one is to build a client and the second one to identify the project completion a date the actual dates which can improve uh, it can be used as a historical data that can improve uh, duration and execution in uh, uh, other projects the duration of a task depends on the number of resources available needed to accomplish that task assuming that we are talking about people as a resource then uh, two persons or two people might move a sofa faster than one person now three people could also assist but at a certain point increasing the number of people will increase task duration this point is called the crashing point instead of the uh, they are assisting each other to move the sofa actually you know four or five people will uh, create like uh, maybe a discussion or uh, will uh, uh, argue on how to move the sofa from one place to another which will extend the time duration or maybe one will depend on the other and then the sofa will not be moved correctly all that is called uh, at that point crashing point because I have more people than needed with more resources communication overhead and risk will increase duration of task is a random variable because of the varying skills levels not everybody can do it the same not everybody has the same skills not everybody has the same skill level so of course with that there will be variation in um, performing the task or uh, in finishing the task 
also we have unexpected events that uh, might delay the uh, task execution or uh, the uh, performing or uh, completing the task such as incorrect shipment also we need to look at the efficiency of work time uh, for example need additional time to go back to the same level of productivity if interrupted um, not to mention mistakes and misunderstandings uh, that will lead to rework and uh, semi-completed work and also the common cause variation which is just uh, you know nature uh, of the variation to avoid that, we have different strategies that can be used to estimate task duration with the narrowest possible variance. Those methods, there are six common methods that can be used for estimating the uh, task duration. We might look at, you know, similar uh, tasks or similar activities that's been done um, uh, before. Um, doesn't have to be the same item but uh, it should it could be similar item and then I can look at the duration of the time for that item and this is what we called analogous uh, estimation and then we can look at the historical data and that could be um, or uh, that's called uh, parametric estimation we can also look at the expert advice and we can uh, take the average of the expert uh, advice uh, see uh, if we have more than one expert then we can take uh, their average and if I do it more than one time then I will call it Delphi technique Delphi technique the last one is the three-point technique actually uh, the one before last is the three-point technique uh, which is uh, it looks at the most optimistic estimate the most pessimistic estimate and the most likely estimate which are then averages also the last one is the wide band Delphi technique and the wide band com uh, combines um, Delphi and three-point techniques together this slide shows an example of the parametric technique where it's given that uh, a resource um, uh, here uh, installs installed 25 uh, uh, meters of a cable in one hour and we would like to estimate the duration of installing 1000 meters of the same cable using one resource the estimated duration time will equal to 1000 divided by 25 which is equal to 40 hours so we used the historical data that we have to calculate new dur duration for uh, a different amount now we are assuming that it will take 40 since the 25 took one hour then we are assuming that the 1000 will take 40 uh, it's again this is an estimation so sometimes um, things might happen and that might not be uh, true uh, a delay might uh, happen but again this is just an estimation based on historical data this slide shows an example using Delphi techniques we have three experts John Jack and James and we have the task duration based on each expert opinion to uh, estimate the duration we calculate the average which is in this case the sum of all tasks durations uh, divided by the number of experts uh, which is 3 and the average will be 22 hours this is another example showing the three-point techniques or technique to use this technique we need to find the most likely time duration for each task then the best case scenario duration which is called the optimistic then the worst case scenario duration which is the pessimistic and we can estimate the standard deviation which will assist in improving task duration 
Uh, now notice that the expected or the estimated time does not equal does not equal adding the 3 and divided by 3 because it's not a normal distribution it will be a gamma distribution based on that the average will be calculated by adding the uh, optimistic plus 4 times the most likely plus the pessimistic divided by 6 and that will be the expected time or estimated time duration the variability of the task duration will decrease as we go further in the execution of the project until we reach the accurate estimate there are three variables that influence duration estimate the duration itself the total amount of work hours or days the percent uh, per day that uh, person can devote to task methods for estimate, uh, estimating uh, duration as a function of resource availability we have assigned as a total work and a constant percent per day uh, for example we have 40 hours divided by uh, 0.5 and that's the uh, percent and that will give me 80 hours or we can assign as duration and total work effort uh, we have five people working in 10 days which will give me 50% uh, effort for each person per day uh, we have assigned as duration and percent per day which is 10 days times the percentage that means uh, I have I need five persons or five people to do uh, that uh, activity the sequence of activities was explained in details in the previous session through network diagram and the critical path calculations but it's very important to mention that we need to identify the type of dependency between the tasks to make uh, uh, sure when to start the task and when to end it and you know of course that will affect with uh, overlapping and the duration and the resource assignment or resource balance and that uh, we will talk about that uh, in a different uh, session there are three types of dependencies uh, uh, th that are used to define the sequence among the activities it could be mandatory uh, dependency it could be discretionary or it could be external dependency so we have to identify these dependencies before we move to uh, you know uh, uh, creating the sequence or the schedule for the uh, activities at this point the project schedule will be the outcome of defining the activities needed to complete the project estimating the duration and resources needed and identifying the sequence for these activities so the project schedule will include activity list activity attributes including duration the sequence of activities uh, resource requirements and project timeline or uh, the calendar when would it start and when uh, would it end the software packages that will assist in developing the uh, project schedule are Microsoft project uh, using the Gantt chart and again you can get that for free from the college and you can use uh, the uh, Microsoft project to develop the uh, uh, outline for the work breakdown structure and the network diagram it can create it by itself once you create the outline it will create automatically for you the network diagram you can also use Microsoft Visio through developing the network diagram and the network diagram should be part of micro, uh, Microsoft Visio if you face any problem just search it on Google and see if uh, because sometimes the version differ, di differs from 2007 2010 and 2013 so if there is a difference search and see if they have the package for network diagram within the uh, Microsoft Visio and there is a network diagram which is the like uh, network layout for computers which is different than the network diagram that we are talking about here that includes the uh, activities different activities and the duration for each activity so be careful about which one to choose 
You can also use Microsoft Excel, which can be also used to develop the work breakdown structure and the time duration. And also you can use Microsoft Word in creating activity and associated duration as an outline. Uh, you can um, use the shapes in Microsoft Word and you can develop the uh, different activities and their duration. So you have all these packages, you can play with them and you can see if um, you can create just a small uh, project uh, with uh, certain activities. Uh, train yourself on that and if you have any problem then you can uh, call me. That will be all for this session. If you have any questions please uh, email me and I will be more than glad to assist. Thank you and have a great day.